it didn't get any longer. No, no, I think we've I'm topped out at about 50, 55 seconds. Yeah, it's about 53 <laughs> or, or so. Yeah, it's, in, it's 53 and change. You know, the like longer that. it gets, the more copy strikes we're going to get. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Got a, uh, instantly uploaded our last episode in the, the jam session. Instantly got uh, two copyright infringement. And so it wasn't a strike, but apparently what you can do, not us, but actual content creators um, <laughs> slash patent copyright trolls, what they can do is... Uh, have Google or, or uh, YouTube effectively be their Shazam and look through things that get uploaded and automatically detect, um, you know, patterns that match their copyrighted material and then automatically file copyright claims. Now, the claim wasn't that we had to take it down. The claim wasn't that we had to do anything. It was, we're going to run our ads on your videos and we're going to make money from your videos, and you can't run ads on your videos. Which, first of all, if anybody's watched any of this, you know that we don't run ads on the videos right now because we can't, uh, so we're not making any money. And two, um, what? You're going to run your ads? And and so at the end of the day, though, number one, I looked up the uh, song that they, they said it was infringing on, and it wasn't infringing. It wasn't even similar in my... It was similar, but it wasn't the same in my opinion. And uh, two, so it was done. We, you know, we did the or uh, Dazzle did the song with uh, GarageBand on on iPad. So we, uh, I looked into the, you know, the the clips and the samples and things like that from GarageBand <coughs> can be copywritten, but as part of the license agreement of GarageBand, as long as you are creating a song effectively and publishing the song, you have free free reign to do whatever you want with the samples. The only thing you can't do is like repackage the samples and sell the samples sure. like, as samples. So anyway, I uh I submitted that to uh YouTube and the, the both claims were uh released, resolved within an hour or so. Which I was really amazed. But yeah, look turns out the system well, works both ways, I guess. Well, I think I think for certain people it does. I think I think if we were a much larger channel it probably yeah, if would there was any if there was any actual money to be yeah. had they're like oh wait <laughs> these people don't get ads <laughs> no what they probably do is run ads on our videos and then promote our videos so <laughs> we should have been like yeah 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 totally yeah, go, go ahead yeah, can, can, we use some more, yeah. can we use some more copyright music that'd be great um so yeah so uh boy we just got over thanksgiving uh, uh, i'm not over it but uh, it has passed <laughs> it has not fully passed through me yet there's still thanksgiving inside me that I am not thankful for. Yeah. Uh, but Thanksgiving the day is come and gone. It is currently Black F- Black Friday, actually. Yeah. We're, we're, which we're isn't which isn't a thing it. anymore. But oh, I mean, it, it it it's it's a thing. It's just not. It's not a thing like it used to be. It's like Black Midweek now. Black Black Week. I mean, I I think most people. I think the people that go out to shop on on Black Friday, it's more of a. For certain people, a tradition. I mean, then I, useful. Yeah, no, I agree, and it, I, I've done it. It's fun. It can, it can, it can be, fun. be fun. Um, yeah. and I've worked. I mean, you've you've worked. Well, with I me was in, yeah in retail. Um, on Black Friday, and that's it's actually has its own its own unique type of fun to work in retail on Black Friday. Um, because you can basically get away with saying and acting however you want to the customers, and they have no recourse. So you basically get like a year's worth of frustration. So it's like, we I just want this. It's like, no, we don't have it. Move along. <laughs> like, that's that's fun. Um, but my I don't have a problem with people who get up on Black Friday and go shopping. I have a problem with people who go out shopping on Thanksgiving. Like I think that's horseshit. I don't think I I, I mean I, I the only and the only way the stores are going to learn is but people not going. But but people will unfortunately people, will go. people still go. I think they should just. They should. I, I said this years and years ago, is they should just flip flop it where Black Friday is actually Black Wednesday because basically everybody has the next day off. So you make you make Wednesday your shopping, and then you have Thanksgiving and and Friday with you know at home or whatever. Yeah, but Black I've Black said it for years. Black Wednesday is too too big of a drinking day. You could still dr- you can go shopping and then go drinking. I guess there's nothing wrong with it. They're not mutually exclusive. I guess I I think that uh, that that was a. Uh, a big start to the to the downfall of Black Friday was that we're actually going to open up 5 p.m. on Thursday. Yeah. It was, it was like, it, what? Yeah. Well, it, it crept earlier and earlier, right? It was like 
5 a.m. on Friday, then 4 a.m., then 2 a.m., then midnight, and then it was like 8 p.m. And now it's like 4 and 5 or 6 p.m., depending on the store. Oh a lot of the places, though, at least now, they're, they, they are treating it more like a whole week where a lot of the places are doing their deals like online yeah. beforehand. Yeah. You know, certain things. Um, so I think the, the effect of the doorbuster, quote unquote, is minimized. Like, I think the, the, because they've sort of spread out the the deals and the shopping and everything the the you know showing up at 6 p.m to get the the tv that's 20 dollars cheaper than the one they've been selling all week isn't as big of a deal anymore <coughs> well i you also know? i also think that um but you got a ps4 controller right? i did i did um but that was like t- tuesday <laughs> it's like or whatever day that was well, like, yeah exactly that link. yeah i think i think um you know black friday on in on the retail worker side is probably this week is probably the worst week of their lives. Yes and no. Like I said, I've 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 done it many for many years. I did I did probably like five Black Fridays in retail, and uh, it's it, it sucks in a lot of ways, but it's a lot of fun in a lot of other ways. That's just me. I you know the excitement, the the lack of sleep, the you know. Oh yeah, that lack of sleep is. Whew, I well, you're, forward to you're, it you're every wired, year. You're wired and you're... Oh, man, you know, I had... I think I think one of the last... It can... I found it... I found parts of it to be fun. Would I have rather been at home sleeping or doing literally anything else? Yes. But I found... I did find uh, enjoyment in some of it. I remember the one of the last or second to last Black Fridays. Um, I think I think I showed up at like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. I think we opened at like 4 or 5 a.m., yeah. I think. At that point, if that if that place was still open, they'd probably be doing the the five p.m. Show. They would be doing anything they could to yeah. get people in the door. <laughs> but giving away breakfast burritos. <laughs> they uh yeah I showed up and I I I think I fucking downed five energy drinks before we even opened. Like yep. I felt sick that I had so much. But yep. um, do you have any like crazy Black Friday stories? I mean, I've had I had I've had people uh, yell. I I I've had I've done some crazy stuff like going out and going out into the uh, into the line out in front of Best Buy and trying to sell them like antivirus and anti spyware software on their their fucking two hundred dollar laptops, which was a lot of fun. Um, I've had people like try jumping over like barriers and stuff, and we have to like stop them and kick them out and. Basically, you get to talk to them like they're children because it's Black Friday and nobody cares. Like you're not yeah. there for the customer service on Black Friday. Yeah, there's so there's so no that's, customer service on Black Friday. That's fine. Uh, there was I've had people yell and scream at me because there was only two or three of the doorbuster TVs and they showed up like two hours later. But in their defense, a lot of our ads would say, "Oh, they were missing f- five time. or ten. Yeah, minimum, minimum minimum five or ten, or and per we store. would have three. Yeah, and then we're like, well, they don't know <laughs> exactly." Like, and then they they show up and it's like you yeah, know nope it's it's four oh one a m and we're out I'm like yeah sorry man yeah should have uh should have been here earlier should, yeah should should have been here right after dinner yeah no bring it with you yeah people used to it was that was back oh, at yeah. a time where people, people used, used to camp to out camp out have sure. have a tent and stuff it was fun I used to go when I when I worked at Best Buy I would um I'd have to be there at like two or three in the morning and they opened at like four or five but after dinner around like 11 or midnight i would uh drive by the best bikes just to see just to see and it's always always a shit show there's people with tents and yeah and uh and like canopies and grills and i showed up it's crazy i showed up i went to best buy just for fun i wasn't even planning on buying anything i went there two two years ago i think um, I, I showed up a little bit after Thanksgiving dinner. It was like maybe f- five o'clock ish. And there was like 12 people standing outside. Like I was one of the first group to get into the <laughs> Best Buy and I didn't even, I, I didn't even plan on buying anything. So me and, uh, you, you don't want to get, uh, this season one through eight of 24 for four ninety nine on the, DVD. No, no. Yeah. yeah. Surprisingly. Damn. Me and uh, me and fuckface were walking through, and um, I'm just looking around. I'm like, you know, there's video games for two for twenty and stuff. I was like, this is good deals, but it's like, well, I the mean, other side of that coin is like cool, but you can't take your time 
in no. there because the, the the checkout line becomes the longest part. Right. It's insane. Not only that, but the way they do the store. They like they line up merchandise so it's like a fucking like a corral. Yeah, they 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 and heard you. That's they what I was when I said you. people jumping over barriers yeah. and like stuff. Yeah. We had to we, <laughs> we had to reprimand some folks. And you know what's funny? I did just think of a uh, a fun Black Friday story, which is it, I did it's not while I worked in retail. This was two years ago. Um, I don't remember if you were there or not, but we were at uh, C- Cousin Dazzle's house, as usual, on, on Thanksgiving. Um, <coughs> and uh, it, was on, it was on Thanksgiving. We were there for Thanksgiving, and it was like 8 p.m. or so, and we ran out of booze. We ran out of we ran which that's, never happens. That's, that's, we, well, no, we ran out of something. We ran out of something that we we wanted or something that we were enjoying. I don't remember if it was beer or a specific liquor. I don't remember, uh, but I was wasted. And uh, <laughs> myself and uh, and Mrs. Razzle took a trip to the local Walmart, and I didn't realize until I got there, and I'm inside this fucking zoo <laughs> that wait a minute their black friday is going on right now so i'm in walmart at like 8 30 p.m when and there's just fucking mouth breathing hillbillies oh god everywhere yeah trying to get two dollar you know, towels it's unbelievable <laughs> and i'm just i'm wasted and i'm just like strolling through the store like where's the booze <laughs> where's the liquor section and i'm just here for the booze <laughs> and I grabbed whatever I was grabbing, and it, I checked out and left. But I, I, it, it's just I couldn't believe it. I, I, I didn't even think of it. I'm like, why is this place so busy? <laughs> Man, a lot of people must be out of alcohol. Well, they they do something uh, interesting. Excuse me, I'm very uh, stuffed, sick. stuffed up, sick, infirm. I'm just a, a perpetually sick. But um, yeah, I know. they Walmart because Walmart's open. 24 hours. Uh-huh. I don't even think they close on Thanksgiving anymore. No, they don't. And what they do is, though, to prevent people from, like... Sleeping in the store. Sleep, sleeping in the store or, like, pushing over yeah. some, you know, making a, a, a toilet paper bed mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that is they, they incrementally... Increase the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> that would be smart. They start, they start pushing in, uh, <clears throat> you know, noxious fumes between... One no, and five fucking hillbillies do enough of that. But they every two hours they they say, okay, now this stuff is on the deal. Yeah, and then two days later, the old stuff is still on deal if there's any left. But now it's a new group of stuff, and they have like like end caps, and they have um, things in the middle of the aisle that they have covered in shrink wrap and stuff with mm-hmm. numbers that only they know what the numbers are. And then once you know. 12 rolls around they they rip those up they go okay these are the, you know so they do something that's that i think is is smart instead of putting out an ad and saying all of this stuff is do- door buster all of this stuff is our black friday stuff it's like yeah it's every every couple hours every couple hours changes. they have something so that other places have done that too oh, but well yeah. I, I thought i thought that was a good way to do it because then i actually went the same day at, right after best buy me and fuckface were like let's go over to walmart and um, I went over to Walmart, and I had uh, the littlest Dazzle with, with me, and he was not happy. <laughs> he was not excited. I was like, well, we'll get stuff and Christmas shop and whatever. And he was like, ugh. But I ended up getting um, – I actually bought stuff at Walmart. Sure. Like, I think I spent like $400 at Walmart that night because I was like, well, you know, I Would could – you buy every TV they were I selling? D- I did, like – 80% of my Christmas shopping that year, that oh. night. Like, I bought a sound bar with a Bluetooth for, like, it was a Sony. It was, like, regularly 150 on Amazon and stuff. And then I'm, I'm looking, and they have it for, like, seventy nine ninety nine. Bought a couple of those. And actually, the, 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 the fucking uh, tween that was working the electronics section was like, uh, you know, I think we're all of this. I don't see any of them. And, and here I am. I'm like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure these are still here. So I was looking through the electronics and behind like a stack of like 27 inch Vizio TVs, there was, there was two 
hiding. And I was like, <laughs> well, uh, so, sorry, whoever hid these yeah, here. Sorry, whichever employee. <laughs> the, those are mine. Because, uh, re- yeah, retail employees never hide oh, stuff. Oh, no. Of course no, no, not. No, especially not on Black Friday. No, no, no. Or have our, our moms come in and buy stuff or our friends come in that that we've uh, held, held aside. It never happens. Yeah, that never happens. Uh, Behind no. the hard drives. <laughs> Fuck. Who knows? Um, do you ha- did you have any um? Okay, so for for a little backstory, um, Razzle and I worked um in retail. Now he started in Best Buy. I never worked at Best Buy. Um, and then we went from there from a different electronics uh, uh store. You can say it. I don't care. I don't know. I don't. You know. You don't want to associate with that brand. I mean, I really don't. Like, okay. I, I don't. That's fine. Um, after what they did to to me specifically, uh, many a terribly, times. horribly shitty electronics store. Yes, that doesn't um, exist anymore. That doesn't exist anymore. Um, and there's a lot of those actually. Oh yeah. But um, in any event, um, <clears throat> I was more of a, uh, uh, a a less scummy salesperson. Yeah, to be successful at this store, you, you, you had to be a scumbag. So you were, it was commission, but it was like, so you got paid like eight or you got paid minimum wage plus commission. But depending on how filthy scummy you were, yeah. you could end up making like 50, 60 grand a year or more with the commission. Yeah. But you had to be a complete and utter you had to, bag. Yeah, it'd be awful. I did great. Yeah, he, he did great. Um, I was um, I was middle of the road dirtbag. I wasn't as dirty. No, there was scummier. Nearly, yeah, I wasn't nearly you. as dirty as some of the other people. But well, that's because I think there was a di- there was a, the the only difference between the I don't think it was a scummy level. I think you were scummy. I think you a lot of them were scummy, but you had more knowledge than than they did. So there was there was a small bit of truth to every lie that you told, enough so where you know if somebody felt a. Uh, like they got swindled by you. It's like, well, it's your own fault. <laughs> you know, like if one of the other scumbags is just like, yeah, this will make your computer run cooler. This will this will make yeah. your TV look better. This will actually upconvert your your four 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 eighty uh, I to a to a ten eighty p. Um, this will and and you. It, I once okay, I've told this story before, not on here, but there was one salesman. Good for him, uh, and he's still in sales, but not in not in retail. Um. He once sold a laptop <clears throat> to a guy. This was the interaction. The guy comes up, and it's it's a busy day, like Saturday, Sunday, something. It's real busy. Guy comes up, this older uh, older black guy. He's like, hey, man, can you tell me about this laptop? And the guy goes, the guy who worked there goes, that laptop? You can go wild on that laptop. <laughs> and, and, the, and the customer's like, I can go wild on that laptop? He's like, you can go wild on that laptop. All right, I'll take two, and that was the whole. That was the whole fucking interaction. And good for him. That was. But, that's that's a that's. My, I wish I knew that phrase. But that's that is. <coughs> that is a a small picture of of the type of things interactions that would take place there. Sometimes people just need to hear stupid things. And that that guy was really really good. He at probably knowing he them. walked into the store going. I need to get a laptop I can go wild on. I need a laptop that doesn't cost $1,000 that I can go wild on. And then I'll buy one for my kids. They'll go wild on that. And then he walks in, and then, and then the salesperson goes, you can go wild on that laptop. And the guy just is like, that's it. Like, Done. that's, you, you, hit, you hit every criteria I needed before <laughs> I walked into the store. Oh, that checks everything off my it, list. Yep, one <laughs> sentence. Let's wrap them up. Yeah. Um, that's, that's that's but the, that's that's not yeah but you what you were saying about there was a there was this piece of software there was this company the <laughs> there was this software company that every piece of software you sold for it, them malware got, wasn't software yeah, it was got, malware you got a flat dollar amount of commission they called it a spiff um, so if you sold this let's say seventy dollar piece of software you got fifteen dollars it used to be twenty five when I started yeah you got fifteen twenty dollars whatever it was um, for this you know. A direct commission to you for selling this piece of software. There was another one that was like thirty dollars that you got a twelve dollar commission on, and this thing was basically a glorified like cookie cookie cleaner. Sea cleaner. Yeah, it was ba- yeah a glorified sea cleaner effectively. And uh, 
this one dude would sell it to people. People would come in looking for like a cooling pad for their laptop, like the thing with fans and stuff like, yeah. oh, no, you don't need that. You want your laptop to run cooler. You just run this software. It'll clean it up, make it run faster, and then it'll make it, you know, make it cool down. And and he he would sell a ton of it. He would get a ton of it returned, but he would sell a ton of it. But not once it was opened. Well, no, mostly. Sometimes, sometimes people came in and, and pitched enough of a fit, rightfully so. Um, that that we let him return it, but that but, was that was the that was the fallback. It was like, and you could return anything to any store if you complain enough. Oh yeah, but, but open software, you know, CDs, movies. Most places don't take that stuff back once you open it, right? Um, because they can't do anything with it. But the I, the way he would break it down, you had you had to respect the hustle because. Well, he and he. The thing was, he believed it. He because I've I I cornered him at one point as like, dude, you are so fucking full of shit. Like, because I was a, I was like the sales lead or something. I'm like, dude, you have no idea the shit that I have to deal with because of your ridiculous lies. Yes. And he's, what, what do you mean? You're like, I mean, technically, if the CPU runs slightly mm-hmm. lower, then right, the temperature won't be as like you're a slimy piece of shit. And the funnier part is, he was a huge Bible thumper too. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't want to get into that, but it's like you, you pride yourself on being a good person in one aspect, and you totally, totally are a shitbag in another aspect. Well, he whatever. needs those spiffs put in that tray every oh week. Oh my god. Got um, yeah. Yeah. He was. I I respect the way he he would break it down, which is when you would if you're listening to it from from a layman point of view, everything he's saying makes sense. Right, yeah. you run the software, it it it, it frees up you know uh, so much hard drive space. Well, then your hard drive's not working so hard. That'll make it run cooler. Then you've got your CPU and that's doing all this. This will kill all those tasks, free up memory. Then everything you know, you you can probably drop your computer like you know uh, fifty degrees <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But and, and he would say these things, and it's like most people would go, yeah, that that checks out. That makes sense, but then you really look at it and you're like, you no. are not telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> not not even remotely. Uh, yeah. But so, you respect the hustle. Yeah, so that, that that was but anyway, we also used to take uh used to take stuff and there was there was a uh, a term that Best Buy taught me called inboarding. <laughs> and inboarding I, I don't remember I, I I believe the term was inboarding, but most people called it onboarding. I don't know why. But anyway, the the the, the thing was is you can't discount the product in order to fold in something that benefits you. So inboarding is if I have a hundred dollar laptop and I want to sell a $30 piece of software that gives me $12, but I know they're not going to buy it. I sell the laptop for 70, add the $30 piece of software and it still comes out to be a hundred. But yeah, we did that shit all the time on black Friday. We literally at one point went up to every single person in line and put one of those $30 pieces of software on their order and just had the cashier discount whatever they were buying by $30. Right. I'm which not, I'm not surprised this company went out of which business. Which is I was going to say I was like is a pretty dangerous practice oh, when yeah. the margin on a laptop is nothing. 3%. Yeah, it's you know? nothing. So, but yeah, the well, the company went out of business because the CEO was caught embezzling like $200 million, and then he fled on his yacht, and they never caught him. Right. So, anyway. It's, uh, actually, the company still exists online, but no, I don't know I who don't... the fuck would order from there. But, the, yeah, but that's the weird thing, is because I still get the emails. Yeah. And I look at them, and I'm, I see the same stuff they were selling yeah, f- six years ago. So maybe the, maybe the website's just still up, <coughs> but it's never been updated. No, it, it that isn't it because you could you could go through the whole purchase process. So someone is sitting in an order fulfillment center somewhere. It's just one guy. Yeah, and somewhere. he's fulfilling. They probably have seventy million dollars worth of product. They're trying to get some stupid idiot to buy. Look at that. Let's Obviously, their Black Friday sales on right now. Let's look. Look at those. Look at the desktops. Like the, they're this. It's the oh, look. I haven't seen. Look at these. These are the same things we were selling. An i three, <laughs> an i three sixty one hundred. Yeah. F- oh, it's like, are you four, kidding? Four me? gigs of RAM, five hundred gig hard drives. Although I would totally buy that AMD A yeah, six. I know you would for a hundred bucks. That's a media center PC right there, buddy. It's refurbished too. So you know, every everything on this fucking site is refurbished. I know, dude. This is 
Look at these laptop prices. They're in fucking sane. Look at this Lenovo ThinkPad i5, yeah, is... $700. Yeah. So the point is, the, this website is somehow, this company is somehow still in existence. But, uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how. I wish there was like a hit counter so we actually so we could, could see? see how many people yeah. visit this site. Like, they can't be a lot. It can't be. I'm their I'm there one. I'm their one for, uh, for yeah for, for for today for Black Friday we yeah. are we're their one we got one those those HP Pros are the same HP Pros we were selling I know TVs I mean I can I can get a 50 inch TV for two ninety nine or less. these are like seven hundred dollars I know you don't have to tell me buddy. holy fuck four thousand well, dollars oh that's, that's a that's peerless a ultra yeah, that's UHD a, that's okay a whole other all right thing. that's okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's like weatherproof. I've actually been to the Peerless factory in, uh, like, in Melrose Park. Mm-hmm. Um, I was there once because I was. That was a very weird, uh, very weird thing. So, do you remember when we when we lived together? You yeah. Remember the uh, the landlord? Yeah. I don't know if you ever met them, but I met him. So the landlord, the landlord's <laughs> husband, was trying to set up a contract with Gas City, which. Based on that, you can tell how this all worked out because Gas City went out of business. Um, I was trying to set up a contract with Gas City to to provide and install basically those gas station TVs, the GSTV. Yeah. And, and you know what? Maybe that GSTV is this guy. I don't know. But he brought me in at one point to consult on like some of the technical aspects of it. And we actually went to the Peerless factory and met with some of the guys and talked to them about some of their like outdoor weatherproof screens and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, that was cool. I've been to the Peerless Factory, uh, yeah. and that's all I have to say. About one one that. day, I would, uh, I would like one of those little, little, little porches, tiki torches, a sure. fifty-inch outdoor TV. Sure, be like a, a fucking Buffalo Wild Wings in my house. I would just do a projector. Uh you can't do that. During uh, you the can't day, do though. it during the day. Yeah, not not very well. But believe me, I've I've been thinking of going the projector route. Mm. Um. With the prices and, and what you get and everything. I don't even need a screen. I have a huge white wall. I just fucking... You can, uh, and you can get the, I mean, you don't have to, but you can get the special, like, paint that, that makes the picture better. And that shit really, really does work. Yeah, I could just put up a a, a, a border, a yeah. fake, fake border, paint trim. inside of it. Yeah, and... well, paint and then put the trim over it. it yeah. Like that know. way you don't have to tape and be, yeah, yeah. be inside of clean lines and shit, but... <clears throat> That's okay, this isn't a home improvement, uh, home improvement. So what you're going to do is... Um, I have a funny, uh, Black Friday story or what I, what I, what, what I did one of my last Black Fridays because I got really pissed off. Um, I, I was, uh, I spent my later years as a, a technician and a damn fine one for this electronics company. And, um, but Black Friday, you, you were a salesperson. Didn't yeah, matter. Everybody. everybody. The warehouse people. They're all selling. Everybody was a salesperson. They're all helping people. And I was like, okay, well, my background is in sales. I was like, I don't have a problem well, with that. Well, that's how you got, you got hired as a salesperson yeah, originally. I got hired, fired, rehired. I worked every position there. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> so. Oh, yeah, you were in the warehouse, too. I was in the warehouse. I did, all, I did all of the things. So what I would do is I would swindle people. My swindle was... And this is probably the most um, slimy thing I ever did. Well, second slimiest thing I ever did. I would convince people to buy higher ticket. I, look, so okay, so backstory: we've got three of these TCLs for for three hundred dollars, um, but we have those run out. So now people are like, well, you know, we came came here for a TV. So I tell people like, well, you came here for TV. Let's get you a TV, okay? We can it's not you... bait and switch at all. No, it's not bait and switch. So we 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 we've got this forty inch Toshiba for f- T- Toshib four ninety nine. You have Toshib. Well, yeah, Toshib. 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 How many giga? Uh, it's, uh t- two giga. I want the one the Toshib with a four giga, a, a two hundred giga hard drive, <laughs> on a TV. You have yes, a t- <laughs> Toshib. You have Toshib. So I would I would I would say. You know this this Toshiba is on sale for four ninety nine. I was like, its regular price is is you know five ninety nine. I was like, what you do is you buy it now, right? And then in 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 four days or whatever, you could return it 
we'll, we'll give you the full price for it. Just just tell them, tell them you lost your receipt, and then you'll you'll make a hundred dollars on it, and then you can get a better TV. Like I would f- try to frame things with returns and exchanges, and I also did the same thing for You're right. That that, <laughs> that is, is extremely slimy. That is super <laughs> slimy. That's shit that we would do though. And then, well, yeah, you gotta... I would I would buy stuff and I'd wait years and or I'd buy stuff on closeout and then look at somebody's receipt from like three years ago when right. that thing first came out and return it for the price it was like three years ago. Yeah, I bought one time from another. I'll let you finish in a second. Um, I'm Kanye, oh, thanks. I'm Kanye West in this scenario, <laughs> Taylor. Um, I, I bought a graphics card from one of the other employees. <coughs> um, we we lovingly referred to him as Shrek. <laughs> um, I bought a graphics card from him for like $100. I looked up his receipt from when he bought it and returned it for like $600. Yeah. <laughs> like the next day. Wow. How did this place go out of business? Yeah, no shit. Uh, anyway, continue. So I, I, I would do that or I would tell people leading up to Black Friday, like the, mm. the two weeks before, I'd be like, hey, you buy this TV now for six ninety nine. I I know Black Friday's around the corner. I can tell you that TV's going to be three ninety nine. Now we had a fourteen day return exchange policy for TVs, so anything within fourteen days I wouldn't do, but anything outside of fourteen days I would. And then people would try to show up and be like, "Wait, this TV isn't any cheaper," or you know, this I can't get it. And then be like, "Nah, bad. That's fourteen days." And then they would complain, and I'd be like. <laughs> I'd be like, whatever. Finger guns. You know? <laughs> so that was... That's extraordinarily surprising for me. For, for me? Yeah. yeah. Because you got moved from sales to being a technician because you couldn't adapt to the sliminess. It wasn't that I couldn't adapt to the sliminess. What it, what it, what it was or was... Or you, did, you didn't want to. I, I, it's, not, it's not even that I didn't want to. It was... the I didn't believe in... The, the business practices as a whole. I said, after the first, the first time I got fired, I said, this place will not be here in seven years. Oh, yeah. I said, there's no way with these changes. Because when, I, when we first started, or when I first started, you were there before I, the system was completely different. It was one retailer, right, with one name, known <laughs> for one thing. Yep. And they paid us more. The sales were better. And, you know, at that time, when I first started, it was like eleven seventy five an hour plus commission. Right. Okay? It worked. The business model worked. Well, they also had the, the general manager of each store. There was only like six or <coughs> six or nine stores, I forget which. Yeah. And the, the general manager of each store reported directly to the vice president of the company. Mm-hmm. You had a very clear tree of of authority um we you could get away with a lot more and there was less of us okay so you had less of a of a of an employee footprint right then everything turned to shit they did what everybody else does overnight another a competing electronic store went out of business and the one that we worked for bought the name and 16 stores and overnight went from nine stores to like 25. Yep. And then they took a bunch of the people that ran that other business into the ground and they moved them into middle management between the stores and the corporate structure and effectively put them in charge. Right. And then that failed. And then another electronics company went out of business. They bought that name and then took a bunch of those people and put them in charge. Yep. So you had two-thirds of the leadership was, was people who've already ran similar competing businesses into the ground. Um, and it didn't go well. And if that wasn't bad enough, then what they decided to do was change the commission structure. So oh, now yeah. they're not making as much money. You know, they've invested so much in buying this domain name, this company, this stock all of this stuff, hiring these people overhead for these new stores that they now have to pay for. They're like, you know what? We're, we're going to take away the hourly, okay? You're, you're, the employees are going to be strictly commissioned. This is for sales. 
sales sales associates are going to be strictly commission. They lowered the starting hourly for the stock workers. They lowered the salaries on the salaried managers. And which I didn't think was possible. No, not not retro. Like any no, I know. Hires. No, no, no. I meant I didn't think those salaries could get any any lower. lower. Yeah, they were bad. And um, they they effectively took away the hourly. So what they did was they'd say, okay, normal hourly is whatever eight seventy five or nine seventy five. If your commission is more than that, it's it's whichever whichever is greater. Your commission is greater than that. That's your hourly. If it's not that, if it's not greater than that. Then you get you're in subsidy, which is what it was called, and that was bad. Yeah. If you were in subsidy for two weeks in a row, you were fired. Mm-hmm. I w- not only that, but they also had salespeople um, who were scheduled to come in an hour before the store opens to open, or an hour after the store closed to close, <laughs> or more. You weren't being you paid weren't being for paid. that time, and and not only were you not being paid for that time, that actually counted against right. you because that hour was factored in and averaged against your total number of sales. And a lot of a lot of associates were wouldn't clock in, and yeah, then right. they would get yelled at because it's like, well, you have to clock in because then if something happens while you're on the clock, well, well you know what I'm saying. You so, mean like if somebody were to Lara Croft across a ceiling and then a, a beam <laughs> breaks and you fall from a 25 foot ceiling onto your back? And then have locked. a beam crack them, crack you in the fucking head. Yeah. If something like that happened and you're not clocked in, mm. that's a problem Wait, for everybody. You, even if you are clocked in, <laughs> they don't do anything for you, which in <laughs> retrospect, they should have sued, but whatever. <clears throat> so the, the, the problem that I had with the new system, and I, by the way, I was never in subsidy. Once the new system was put in place, I was never in subsidy, but I had a huge problem with the the, the tactics changed. You know, I could be an honest salesperson and go home and sleep at night on the old system because the incentive wasn't there to it wasn't be scummy. As, it, wasn't it wasn't as high. It wasn't as high. Right. We were all making money. But once the system changed, then you, 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 you were more incentivized to be scummy. Now, what happened with me was... I went through some, as I did a lot in that period of my life, I was going through a lot of personal turmoil, you know, separation from my ex-wife. I was going through a lot of shit at that time. And my head just wasn't in the game. I was in subsidy for two weeks, and then I was fired the weekend of my birthday. <laughs> That's unfucking real. Like, literally. I wasn't, I wasn't there anymore for that. Two, you were not there. Yeah. No. No. That's unfucking two real. two weeks. Do you want to know a funny funny thing about about when they changed the commission structure? Mm. So because I was like sales lead, I made like a dollar more an hour than everybody else. When they changed the commission structure, they never took away my hourly. <laughs> so I was making my normal higher than normal hourly plus the the one hundred percent commission or whatever. So that was nice. Yeah. But yeah. I left anyway because the place was just go, just, going fucking, down in fucking, fucking flames, cesspool. dude. Yeah. Um, I can tell you this, this other Black Friday story that, I mean, I think the statute of of limitations is over. I don't think they can press charges. Is it more than seven years? Wait, did you kill someone? No, I didn't kill anyone. Okay, because there's no statute of limitations on that. Um, we're going to say this, this story that I'm going to tell you is very hypothetical. Highly. Highly hypothetical. Hypothetically, we had a Mitsubishi DLP 65 inch TV. That was on sale Black Friday for I think seven ninety nine. Um, it got cheaper every year. It, it did. Like, it was like seven ninety nine, then six ninety nine, then five ninety nine. Yeah. And you know what? At, at, for for the time, it was a decent pr- for a DLP. Bridge. It was a it was a nice it was, it was a nice TV. I had one, which is unrelated. I was gonna say I, th- I feel like that's what we're <laughs> no, it's unrelated. That's what we're getting at. <laughs> no, I bought that one. That was one of the uh, SS ones that I bought. Oh, of course, and it worked just fine. Anyway, so um. SS for those for but SS was a a moniker that was given to items that were like repackaged that couldn't be sold for for full price so they would call it an SS which means they just added it I don't know if they, it was colloquially if we refer to it as super saver or whatever but anyway you would end up paying like 10% or 20% or 30% of whatever the normal cost was so if this TV was normally like $800 you buy it for like 200 I, I bought or I less. Bought, I bought it for like eighty bucks. Yeah, again or less. And it was, f- it was fantastic. And, like, then the, and then half the time we had shit that just wasn't in the system. Yeah, 
that we would sell to people. There was, there was a couple of people that Oof. would come in from Indiana yeah. that we would sell shit Fucking to. Semi. We would, yeah, we would sell shit to them just for cash and we'd pocket it. Yeah. Well, what else you can do with that shit? You can't. I mean, can't, it's not in the system. You, you can't, can't put anything. it in the system. Actually, what our old manager used to do is he would collect that money and he would like buy us buy like the store lunch or you know uh, go out for like a Christmas party or something like that. He would collect the money and he would use it for everybody. So, <clears throat> um, so what I did was, I this was the same. This was one of the year, one of my last years where I was super pissed off Black Friday because I was a technician. And anytime I would try to like sell stuff, salespeople would like swoop in and be like, you yeah, know, man. and they would That's be like, turf. and then they would t- talk to me like, well, you, you're, you know, you're a technician and you're not, you're not, you don't get paid the commission. I was like, yeah, I do motherfucker. I do get paid commission. I was like, I get the hourly and I get the commission. I was like, well, I'm the salesperson here. And uh, to be honest with you at that store at that time, this was when I transferred back. I got fired. I got rehired a year later because they wanted me back and I wanted to be a technician. And then they moved me to my original store. And um, I was better than half half the sales staff. But anyway, so I'm selling and, and the, I, it, it, it was nice because it felt like the first time I was selling. I didn't have like a huge incentive to be scummy because I was, I was a technician, the technician and I'm getting money. the hourly. Yeah. Right. Plus, I made I had already made a fuck ton of pre pre built or pre uh, cared laptops that we would sell. You know, we would take the Black Friday four ninety nine Asus, and then we would we would set it up and do our you know tech stuff to it, and then sell it for thirty bucks more. And they would get the flash drive and the cleaner and all yeah. that stuff. And I had I had done like twenty of those, and for each one of those, I I made like seven dollars. So I was like, I'm fine. I've already made a, a couple hundred dollars for this day. I'm not really, you know, looking to sell a lot. But one salesperson in in particular, I'm talking, I'm talking to this customer about the, the DLP, and it it was on sale for Black Friday. But at this time, I don't think it was really one of those big doorbusters. Mm-hmm. We had like f- three of them, three of them left <clears throat> at the time, and um. So the, the one guy, you know, he, he's, I'm talking to him and, and then one of the salespeople comes, swoops in like, oh yeah, let me tell you about this TV. I know lots about this TV. And I'm just standing there. I'm like, okay. So then I walked away and I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to be on the floor then if salespeople want to come over right. and stop me. I'll go stand behind the tech counter, get paid for five more hours and do nothing. <laughs> so one, one, we had, we sold out of them except for one that was already sold. Or, or actually, I think it had it had the receipt. It had a receipt on it. What we used to do is, you could print out a receipt for something, even though it hadn't been purchased, mm-hmm. and it would look like a real receipt. So you'd put you you if somebody wanted you'd you'd put the customer's name in. You'd print out this fake receipt. You'd slap it on the TV, put it in holding, and then when they'd come to pick it up, that was the the ticket that mm-hmm. you knew who it belonged to. Then you'd go, you'd sell it, and then whatever. Right. So there was one that was already sold that was in, in the back with a ticket on it. It had been sold for like, I don't, I don't know if it was that day or if it was before or earlier in the week. Mm-hmm. Guy came in looking for the TV. Um, and I'm like, well, we're actually out of them. He was really upset about it. He's like, oh, man. He's like, I really wanted that TV. You know, I should have came earlier. I was like, hypothetically, hey, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, you're uh, Joe Smith or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And he, he caught what I was doing. I was like, hey, I got just what you're looking for. So I pulled the TV out. I was like, I don't fucking care. I don't <laughs> care whose this is. I don't care when they come in to pick it up. Whoever the salesperson is, they can fucking deal with it. Brought it out. Wheeled it out on the cart. Receipt checker checked the receipt. All's good. Went into the elevator. Went down. Hypothetically gave me 650 bucks in cash. Yeah. What a hell of a hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetically. Yeah. So I hypothetically uh, made like a thousand dollars a day. Hypothetically, um, there was a customer that that had bought a TV. It was like a sixty-five, and back when sixty-five inch was like a big, unbelievable. It's still big. But, I know, but back it, then it was, it was that 60, was obscene. It was a sixty-five inch was like two grand or something. He bought it, and it had been sitting in the back with a receipt on it. Oh, the Alevia, the Alevia sixty-five inch, the one that was two hundred and twelve pounds. Because Un- it had a because it was made aluminum, of steel. <laughs> yeah, it was it was or steel, a glass front it was on it. It was but, a monster. So. 
it had been sitting there for like a year. It was sitting there so long, the company went out of business that yeah. made the TVs. It, it, it was there for over a year, and we we ended up finding out like the guy was in jail, and we're like, well, he does, he's not going to miss this. Nah. And uh, so the, those folks from Indiana, they got a real good deal. Yeah, on I bet you they did. And, di- and Daddy got a new pair of shoes. Yeah, I bet they did. You know that guy came back. Did he? Yes. Well. Yes, he did. I don't know if you were there. Oh, the guy from jail. Yes, saying. he okay. came back for that TV. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know that's what happened. That's a shame. Until he came back and he was complaining to, I don't know if it was Yuck or, I could say that. That's okay. a pretty common Asian name, right? It's yeah, like, I hear like, it all the time. Like Lim or Chin or Chow. Yeah, those are all. Ne- Hit- never mind that he's he's Korean and not Chinese. Uh, but. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know he was Korean. Really? I, I, he just—he doesn't like, strike you as Korean. He looks like Jet Li. Kind of, but Korean. Okay. A Korean Jet Li. Okay. Hey, man. Hyuk Lee. Hyuk Lee. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. He came in looking for it and was like, you know, he was in prison for like a, a couple of years, and then he wanted his TV that he paid for, and then they're like, dude, we don't have that anymore like that's kind of anything he want he was like and a part of me was a little sad for him because i was like you know this guy just got out of prison he wants his he TV. wants his tv or at least the money he paid for the tv you know right. he doesn't have any money i would be more concerned with the money if, if i had just gotten out of prison so i think they did give him that's a shame a it's refund it's super it. weird how that company went out of business yeah it's so weird so on that note Hey, that was a good uh, little little. Bl- we shared some stories. We uh, had some times. Yeah, you had good good times. Um, take the good, you take the bad, you take them both. Uh, just just to let everybody know, um, for, for the first time the on the uh, Razzle Dazzle Show, um, uh, our next uh, podcast, we will have a guest. Yes, um, yes, we will. Although I think that one might play before this one. Right. So. Then this is really pointless for me to say. Hey, if you haven't checked out the last podcast, <laughs> right? Check now it we're out. Into a time loop. It, yeah, it's it's it, it record. It, Podcasting is weird. Hold the door. <laughs> um. So okay. So uh, I think that does it. Um. Yeah. Uh. This is the the weekly reminder. We are on iTunes. iTunes. We are on Spotify, Spotify. Although I'm not sure our Spotify is a little bit in limbo, which really? I'll, I'll get into. But um. We are on Spotify. We are on podparadise.com. We are on YouTube, obviously. Uh, YouTube specifically, we would very much appreciate a like, comment, or and or subscribe. Hit the bell. Um, you can hit the bell in order to see, because we put out videos basically every day of oh, the week. Pretty much. We put out videos Monday through Friday. So there's the, the podcast that comes out on Mondays, um, and that hits everywhere, um, iTunes and all that, all, all about the same time. Um, and then we put out our let's play videos Tuesday through Thursday. So we've, we've talked about with the occasional live stream every now and then. Yeah. When I'm bored and drunk (laughs) on on Thanksgiving night. Um, yeah. So, and we've talked about some things we've thought about doing something on the weekends too. We'll, we'll, I don't know. We haven't decided yet exactly what we'll do, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, uh, I have, I have been, uh, uh, Razzle, Razzlethon, Razzle Master. I have been Dazzle. All right. On that, uh, go ahead and uh, generate us a nice uh, copyright strike. Box it and ship it, motherfucker.